Basic narrative structure was likely first defined by Aristotle, who put it as, a whole is that what has a beginning, middle and end. This is, of course, the traditional and linear means by which stories are told in books, TV, films and theatre. The other highly popular story structure is the so-called hero's journey, or monomyth. This is generally divided into a series of constituent elements, for example, the call to adventure, the meeting of the mentor, the trials, enemies, and so forth, and then finally the road back. The hero's journey structure has been famously used in films such as Star Wars, although many do not consider it to technically be a true narrative structure, but rather a tool used to ensure that certain plot points are hit, and that narrative structure is consistent. Although truthfully, any narrative structure can technically be made to fit the beginning, middle, and end model. This formula is fundamental to what a story actually is. Video games, however, may represent an exception to this rule, or at the very least are more difficult to easily categorise within it. Not all games focus on story as their primary concern. However, the greater importance that story is to a game, the more easily the structure ascribes to the beginning, middle and end model. The narrative style of games is most often described as interactive, yet often this very much is not necessarily the case. Many games seek to copy the narrative structure and even style of films, most egregiously are games like Metal Gear Solid 4 with its celebrity voice acting, credits and lengthy dramatic cutscenes. The story isn't necessarily interactive beyond you controlling the player character. On the most subtle end of the scale there's games like Uncharted and The Last of Us which are heavily based on the narrative and the player has no input into what happens within the story. This is not to say that games aren't interactive, this is of course the medium's unique benefit as long as you discount pick your own adventure books and films such as Black Mirror Bandersnatch, which is itself based on a fantasy game book and takes inspiration from modern games with decision making options like The Witcher 3. Anyways, back to the point at hand. Games can use their position as an interactive medium to tell different sorts of stories to that of books, TV and theatre. There is in fact enormous variance in the degree to which games concentrate on narrative. However, when both work in tangent, complementing one another, this is when games are at their best. Some games do so by telling the story almost entirely through gameplay and allowing the player to make their own determinations about what it all means. To me, this is where games can most self-evidently be aligned with art. Each person can form their own opinion about what it all means with none necessarily more valid than any other, so long as they're justified. An excellent example of this is Dark Souls. Here, information is provided by the developers, however much needs to be inferred by the player to make sense of it all. This approach has the benefit of also generating communities and discussion amongst fans, all passionately arguing and discussing amongst themselves as to the meaning of the game. Others, like Grizz, simply allow you to play the game, enjoy the art, sounds and gameplay without telling you anything or giving you a specific purpose. They use linear design to guide the player so as to give structure, but narrative purpose must be implied or inferred almost entirely. I could make a long list of games of this nature, but another really good example which I've covered in a previous video is Hyper Light Drifter, for similar reasons to the Souls games, such as how it uses the environment to tell stories within the game. This sort of narrative approach encourages you to think and creates that feeling of player agency, meaning the player's ability to impact the story through the game design or through gameplay. Agency itself is an interesting and demanding goal for many game developers. The idea that simply making games more open-ended to provide freedom and agency has been well proven as a fallacy. A good example of this would be Ubisoft open world games. They provide the player with an open world space, but they don't really utilise it within the narrative confines. They are ugly mutants of game design, they give you freedom but make you feel purposeless. Or even worse, they give you an open world and create a linear story. It's as though the narrative and the game design are fighting one another. Despite its elusive nature, some games have overcome the hurdle of achieving both narrative structure and player agency or freedom. Breath of the Wild made exploration the central tenet of its gameplay and integrated this within the narrative, requiring you to explore, discover, upgrade and improve through mechanics like shrines and korok seeds were justified and congruent with the aims of saving the princess and defeating Ganon. The unfortunate side effect of that freedom is a contrived and vacant narrative which let the game down. Some games, of which Breath of the Wild is arguably one example, concentrate overly then on agency and lose out on a rich, engaging story. A more egregious example would be a game like No Man's Sky. Although logically you would assume that that sense of an enormous sandbox would give you a feeling of freedom, really it can often lead to the player lacking any kind of purpose. Freedom for the sake of freedom 
isn't all that fun and it isn't all that free. But agency is essential because it makes the story and experience feel unique to the player. They can create their own story through gameplay, discover things and get that true sense of an adventure. On the flip side of overly relying on agency is over-reliance on what we would call railroading. This means highly linear design and decisions being overly made by the designers as opposed to the player. This is just as much of a game design sin. It can make any sense of immersion vanish, lose that interactivity for which games are so unique, and of course the benefits of agency disappear entirely. But some railroading is essential to ensure that the story does not octopus into a confusing mess. Naturally, this raises the question of whether we can have agency as well as a rich narrative, which follows that traditional beginning, middle and end structure. Although the question itself is ultimately relatively subjective, some games do, to my mind, shine out as good examples of this difficult balancing act. For example, the first four chapters of Red Dead Redemption 2 show one way that a game can have that narrative gameplay congruency. The game is of course very rich in narrative, told in the traditional means of dialogue and hitting specific story beats. The early chapters of the game excellently develop your fellow campmates and completing activities within the world allows you to improve the camp and better the lives of those around you. Of course, to push the story forward, linear narrative sections, aka railroading, are needed, but unlike as is so often the case, the bits in between do not feel like filler material. Because going out into the open world, killing animals, and doing all the different activities that are available feel like you're pushing the story forward by developing the characters, and that's a really clever approach. Although unfortunately, Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't manage to maintain this throughout the entirety of the game, this congruency early within the game shows how the two approaches can complement one another to create something truly special. There is a lot that can be said about video game narrative styles, and I'm sure that this video covers only a fraction of the conversation. The games that I feel have the best narrative structures are those which take advantage of the medium. Sticking too rigidly to the structures adopted in film and books is not a recipe for the utmost success in game design. Although games may not be able to entirely escape the requirement of beginning, middles and ends, they can get there in varied and unique ways comparative to the other mediums mentioned. Whether this is done by using the gameplay to tell the story, as in games like Dark Souls, or by balancing agency with rigidity and railroading, considering the medium and utilising its advantages ought to be at the forefront of a game designer's thinking throughout the development of their games. Thank you very much for watching my first essay style video. If you'd like to see more of this sort of thing then let me know below and thanks as always to my Patreons so until next time see you later.